Okay, gonna do a couple more videos here. Again, again, this is the will of God, that you abstain from sexual immorality. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 3, verse 6, verse 8. This is the will of God, that you abstain from sexual immorality. And then he goes on to say, For God is an avenger, as we solemnly warned you and told you before. And anyone who disregards this isn't disregarding me, or you, or Paul. Anyone who disregards this is disregarding God, not man. And by the way, he gives you his Holy Spirit hint, hint, all right? So that's kind of the flavor of what we're looking at here. And we're, we're kind of kicking over some ungodly, unbiblical things like, oh, it's just a little sin, the minimalist. It's been, it's been 30 days, I'm doing pretty good. That whole mentality, the AA mentality, the 12-step mentality. And then we looked at the grace abuse, you know. It's okay, I'm saved by grace. And we kind of looked at that and went into some verses and how uh, if, you're, if you're practicing sin, you're, you're not really covered by grace, right? And, and uh, in the last video, we looked at the, the excuse that I used to hear a lot of, oh, I'm a man, I'm wired this way. I even said it myself before I was born again. And today, we're going to look at the thief of unbelief. And this is, now this is going to be wired more, or this video is going to be obviously for the unbeliever. Um, but, and I know that Paul was talking to believers, right? So I'm just going to take a little liberty with the text because I know a lot of people that watch these on Facebook are some some of them might not be Christians yet, yet, yet. So here, here's here's the, the 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 statement kind of goes like this: Well, I don't believe it. It's okay. I don't believe that's God's word, or or somehow that it's changed. We're going to tie these in together. You know, I oh yeah, that's that's kind of old. I don't think that's for today. Um, oftentimes when I'm preaching in the prison or with, with a newer believer or an unbeliever, I'll ask them, I'll say, okay, you don't believe it? Okay, then we'll talk about something else and I'll kind of come back to that thought and I'll say, okay, write down your top three or four sins that you think God hates the most. This is a, this is a good thing to do if you're talking to a, a, a non-believer or a, or a new Christian. Write down the three, four, five, top five sins that God hates the most. And people will usually write down child abuse, which is terrible, uh, sex trafficking, which is horrible, abortion, which is murder and terrible, and drugs. And you think about it, you can just list them, you know, go down the list. And really, the number one sin is unbelief, isn't it? We see that in Hebrews, uh, Paul says, or whoever wrote Hebrews, I'm not saying it's Paul, but... Whoever wrote Hebrews, I'm trying to find it because I wasn't going to go here today, but whoever wrote Hebrews, he says in Hebrews 3 and 4, he says, Do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. He goes on and he says, uh, Take care, brothers, lest any of you have an evil, unbelieving heart leading you to fall away from the living God. So, someone who says, I don't believe that's for today. I don't believe God means it. I don't believe that that's really God's word. I think it was written by a man. Be careful. God calls that evil. See, murder, sex trafficking, rape, drugs, those can all be forgiven once someone becomes born again. Charles Manson can be forgiven if he becomes born again. If he comes to God and repents and God gives him a new heart and a new... You know, a new spirit within him, God's Holy Spirit resides in him. He can be a new creation. But for those that don't believe God at His Word, they can never be born again unless God takes them out of that unbelief, right? So the whole thing that I don't believe, that's the worst, that's the worst thing you could ever say, is that I don't believe that's God's Word. I don't believe God means that. I don't believe that's for me. I don't believe that 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 was written by God, not a man. I, I think it was written by a man. I don't believe it. I don't believe it's for today. Unbelief is the worst sin ever, and it's the only one that will send you to hell if you don't repent. All the other ones, you can repent of. Unbelief, if you don't have belief, you don't have anything to work with, right? So unbelief, that doesn't work. In fact, people will look at it, sometimes Christians, or, or pretend Christians, will like to say, I don't think that's for today. Well, see, God doesn't change. His word is the same. In fact, we'll go in order. I'll pick four verses in order. Um, Numbers 23 19. God is not a man that he should lie or a son of man that he should change his mind. He never changes. Right? Malachi, I think it's 3 6. Check me on this. I think it says, I, God, I, the Lord, do not change. 
pretty plain, right? He goes on in, uh, what's the next one we should do? How about James 117, part C? Uh, James 117 says, I'm going to paraphrase here, all good and faithful, all good and perfect gifts come from our Father in lights, who is, who in there is no shadow of turning. He never, he's, there's a sermon in that one verse. He's so perfect. He's so good. Where do you go from being God? There's no, certainly no horizontal or, or a vertical move, but no horizontal move. You don't go anywhere from being perfect. The truth is the truth whether you believe it or not. It's always the truth. If God's word says it, it's the truth. See, I can walk up on this building I'm in and walk off the edge and say, no, 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 it's okay. I don't believe in gravity. I, I'm okay. And I'm still going to fall and splat my head on the pavement, right? The unbelief thing doesn't work and, and God doesn't change. He goes on in Hebrews 13, 8 to say, Jesus Christ, who is God, who is the Word, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He never changes. So His, his Word is God's Word. It's God-breathed. The black letters in Leviticus are just as much Jesus Christ's words as, as the red letters in, in John 15, right? And He never changes. So the, the argument that I don't believe it, or I don't believe it's for today, or I believe a man wrote it, you can say you don't believe it, but the truth is the truth whether you believe it or not. Peace.